Now that we've discovered that Bohr's model only works for atoms with one electron, we're going to move on to the last model that's currently fairly well accepted. It's called quantum mechanics. It deals with the probability of finding an electron in a given area of space. So we've given up trying to figure out exactly where the electron is. It starts with the idea of an electron, electron cloud diagram. Those black dots represent electrons and the little red nucleus in the middle. All it's trying to tell us is that as we get farther and farther from the nucleus, it gets less and less likely to find an electron. Erwin Schrodinger is the person responsible for quantum mechanics, and he started by deriving this equation. For obvious reasons, I think you'll figure out we're not going to actually use this equation unless you're pretty good with your second derivatives. Um, instead, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about that equation. You know, the quadratic formula gives us two solutions, one of which is correct. Schrodinger's equation gives us three solutions, all of which tell us something. The first is called the energy level, the second gives us the sublevel, and the third gives us the orbital. So the energy level is that same energy level from Bohr, n equal to 1, 2, and 3. A sublevel, so we're going to divide an energy level into sublevels, and this is just a shape. It's an area in space where there's a high probability of finding an electrons. For those of you who have had any chemistry, you may recognize S, P, D, and F. If not, don't worry about it. And then we're going to further divide sublevels into orbitals. Um, so the S sublevel has only one orbital, so we don't really subdivide it. The P sublevel has three orbitals. One is called the PX, one is the PY, and one is the PZ. The D sublevel has five orbitals. Uh, you don't need to know the names of them. The F sublevel has seven orbitals, so one, three, five, seven. So if we start with the S sublevel, remember we just said it was a shape. It's a sphere. Okay? It's just a sphere in space where there's a high probability of finding electrons. The most electrons that you can put into an orbital is two. So the S sublevel can only have two orbitals. So you might see later that we're going to write things like 1s2 or 2s2 or 7s2. This first number refers to the energy level. The S gives us the shape. And the 2 is the number of electrons in that sublevel. You might even see us write 1s1. 2 is the maximum number, but it can have fewer in that case, 1. The P sublevel is made up of three P orbitals. So this is the PX. This is the PY. And that is the PZ. They're the same exact shape, they're just oriented along the X, Y, or Z axis. And if you put all three together, this is your P sublevel. Now remember, you can get two electrons per orbital, so the P sublevel can have up to six elevens, electrons. So 2P6, 2 is the energy level, P gives us the sublevel or shape and this is the number of electrons. The most you can put in a P is 6. You could have fewer. You could have something like 3P4, 4 electrons in the P sublevel on the third energy level. D, the sublevel and orbitals, now there's five of them. There's the dxy, the dyz, the dxz, the dx squared minus y squared, and the dz squared. You don't need to know those. You do need to know that there's five of them. You can put up to two electrons in each, so a D sublevel can have up to 10 electrons. F, it's got seven different orbitals or shapes, really hard to draw. Don't worry, you'll never have to draw the F or the D. But again, there's seven of them, two electrons in each. You can put up to 14 electrons in an F sublevel. So. What do we do with all of this? So the Aufbau diagram, the idea here is that electrons enter sublevels of lowest energy first. 
So they're going to go into the 1s first, and then the 2s, and then the 2p, and then the 3s, and then the 3p, and then unfortunately the the order gets a little convoluted. But there's a there's a shortcut for learning it. So you start by writing the first energy level has just an s, the second has an s and a p, the third has an s, a p, and a d, and the fourth has s, p, d, f, and then after that they all have s, p, d, and f. These are in green because they exist, but we don't have enough. Uh, we don't have elements with enough electrons to actually put anything in them, so they're irrelevant. And then you draw these little arrows, and then you just go down the list. You go one s, and I'm going to put two in it because that's the maximum number. And then I'm going to write two s two, and then I'm going to write. 2p6, 3s2, go down the next one, 3p6, 4s2, go down the next one, 3d10 now, 4p6, 5s2, etc., etc. What we are writing right now is called an electron configuration. Okay. You can use this shortcut to write your electron configuration, but you're not going to need to, because once we figure out what it is and what we're doing, we're going to learn how to read it right off the periodic table, so we don't need this shortcut anymore. So what does all this mean, though? So let's think about hydrogen, for instance. If you look at the periodic table, its atomic number is 1, so it has 1 electron. That electron goes into the lowest energy sublevel, and that is the 1s. Now, s's are spheres, so this is the 1s sublevel, and hydrogen has one electron, so it's going to go in this space. So its electron configuration is 1s1, one, one electron in the 1s sublevel. Helium has two electrons. We can fit another electron in there, so it is 1s2. But now this is full. So when we get to the next element, we're going to need another sublevel. So remember, this is the 1s. Okay. So what we're going to do now is talk about lithium, which has three electrons. The first two are still 1s2, but the next one are going to go into the 2s. So we've got a 2s sublevel now, 2s1, because it has three electrons. Beryllium has four electrons. The first two go into the 1s2, and the second two go into the 2s2. The only difference between a 1s and a 2s, 2s is that the 2s sublevel, still a sphere, is just bigger. But now this is full, so when we get to our next electron, or um, atom, we're going to need a new sublevel. Okay, so we've got our 1s and 2s there, but now boron has five electrons. So again, we've accounted for the first two, 1s2, 2s2, but where are the next one going? So after the 2s was the 2p. Now that's not a circle, those are those sort of flowery shaped things. Okay. Boron, its fifth electron is going to go into one of those. So 2p1. For carbon, it has six electrons. So 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. Okay. And then we can keep going and we can put up to six electrons there, which gets us all the way to neon. So 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. And now that's full. So when we get to the next atom, we're going to need a new sublevel. All right, so we've got our 1s, our 2s, and our 2ps, okay? And if you look back at your shortcut, the next thing in line is the 3s. So sodium, 
1s2, 2s2, 2p6. That's where its first 10 electrons are, but it has 11 electrons. The next one goes into the 3s, so 3s1. Can you figure out the electron configuration for magnesium? Why don't you pause the video and see if you can write it. Okay, hopefully you did. It's going to go in here also because it can take two. So 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2. Now that's full. So what comes after the 3s? Well, we got some 3p's coming. Okay. So sulfur, you got to look at sulfur and tell me how many electrons are there. I didn't pick the next one. I picked one kind of in the middle. It's got 16 electrons, okay? Can you figure out what its electron configuration would be? Why don't you pause the video and give it a shot? Again, hopefully you paused the video and gave it a shot. Its first 12 are the same as magnesium, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. 3s2. Now we're going to get into the three p's and we've accounted for 12 so we only need four more. So that is sulfur's electron configuration. So you're never going to draw this picture. This is just me trying to give you an idea of what's happening. So the first two electrons go in the 1s and then the 2s and then the 2p and then the 3s, and then the 3p, and then the 4s, and then the 4p, and then you start to get to d's and you really can't do it. So that's just to give you an idea of kind of how electrons are filling from the nucleus out. And we'll practice writing some electron configurations in class.